Hi and welcome back to another video. I digged something out of my basement which is called SystoTech and this was a device, it's almost 30 years old, we're going to check it out in more detail in a second and it was supposed to prevent your CPU from overheating but looking at the instructions I'm not quite sure if that's even possible but let's check that out in more detail. Here we have the SystoTech CPU fan failure and thermal over 110 degrees Celsius warning device. Protect your investment. And I mean, I was just wondering what the hell is this thing even going to do? And then I tried to figure out how you're going to use it or how you're supposed to use it. And you can see that you're supposed to plug this in between the current power delivery of your PSU probably and the CPU fan power connector, as you can see on the bottom here, current fan plug. And then also another detail on the bottom, it says for 486DX Pentium and Pentium Pro systems. This hint on the bottom about 486D6 and also Pentium and Pentium Pro is quite interesting because those CPUs like the 486, they are from the time around 94 to 95, so that's about 28 years ago. That's certainly quite a lot. And then I also tried to access the website because checking on the, on the back, you can see some connections to SCSI advertisements of additional controllers and hard drive scanners, whatever they offered for SCSI connection back then. We are your SCSI specialist at pelogic.com. Then I checked the website, doesn't exist anymore. What a surprise. Then I checked the Wayback Machine and figured out that the company went bankrupt pretty much in 2000, or not, not sure if they went bankrupt, but they stopped operation in year 2000. That's already 23 years ago. Not sure if that's related to this product, which might not make any kind of sense. Anyway, I also then tried to find additional snaps from Wayback Machine, tried to find anything about the tech and I was not able to find anything. So no instructions, nothing I can find on the internet about this product, so I think, we just have to find out how this is supposed to work. One more thing, the 486 Pentium and Pentium Pro. If you check out the specs of those CPUs, they all max out temperature-wise at 85 degrees Celsius. That's why I'm not sure how this thing is going to protect you from 110 degrees Celsius, because at that point, none of these CPUs would be operational anymore. Now I'm still not quite sure how this is supposed to work, but it tells me that it emits a piercing sound when CPU fan fails or system overheats. So whenever the fan stops, it's emitting a sound, but it also tells me that this happens when the CPU overheats. And I'm not sure how this device is supposed to communicate with the CPU because just from the connections, doesn't make any kind of sense to me. On the right side, we have a bit more advertisement, what kind of dangers your CPU could have when the CPU overheats, when the fan stops, and that all you need is SystoTech to protect your CPU and you need it to monitor your system. So yeah, let's open this and check what's inside. First of all, I found this sticker underneath the device, which tells me that if this sound occurs, the piercing sound, then definitely the CPU fan failed and it's overheating. So we have to power down and uh, yeah, replace the fan, not quite sure. And here is our magic device, which is pretty simple. We have Molex as power input, Molex output for the fan, and we have a speaker on the side. We also have a tiny window in here, which could be for maybe a temperature sensor, I'm not sure. Maybe I can open the case and look inside. Not even sure if there's any kind of useful information, at least I see in the center is a comparator. So that's the LM339, which is just comparing two voltages, for example. So it could be the input output voltage that's comparing. The other IC, which was sitting underneath the window, is a voltage detector, as far as I can see, which also doesn't give me any kind of useful information. Now, as you noticed, this thing has Molex input and output, which is definitely not happening anymore these days because that would just be a four pin PVM connector on any kind of recent fan or worst case, a three pin fan connector. And that's where this thing comes into play. The Cooler Master Jet, which is an all time classic CPU cooling fan, was a yeah, very popular thing back then, at least for the visuals, as you can see, it pretty much looks like a plain turbine. I cannot even remember if it has the same kind of noise level. It was famous for its looks, but as far as I remember, not for its performance. And at least it has the required Molex connector, also with two wires, same as what we had on here. So that should work. I think this would allow for fan speed control, which we can see, but 
Yeah, that should be a proper cooler for the 12900KS. What could go wrong pairing this with a 12900K, right? Well, we will find out. I also attached sticker, obviously, it's mandatory. And then also wired up this thing as instructed with power supply and then going to the fan. So let's fire this up and see what happens. Eh, chic. This annoying sound was maybe not as cat friendly, so I decided to put chic into a different room. And now you can only hear the jet, which is pretty much living up to its name. And it's what were companies thinking back then of like <laughs> this type of cooler design. It's so loud, it's amazing. But you can also not hear the beeping anymore. I figured out that this was due to this small, I'm not sure how you call it in English, like it's a VR basically, that you can t use to tune down the fan slightly. So if we tune it down a little bit after a certain point, you can hear that it starts screaming, so that's like the, the edge where it starts to detect that the fan is not spinning anymore. But if we tune it, tune it down all the way, that's where uh, things get annoying. I'm not quite sure what kind of elegant solution this is going to be, because this means that you can only run your CPU fan 100% all day long, otherwise it will start screaming. What works though is if I decide to, I don't know, theoretically your fan could stop spinning, something could get stuck in here for whatever reason, some bugs climbing into your PC and if that's happening, then as you could see if I stop the fan it actually tells me that there is a problem with my fan. Now the question is, is that even a case that happens anywhere? Because at least to me personally it never happened that my fan stopped spinning. That's, I think, one of the only things that never broke down for me, fans. And that's something I would be interested to know from you, if this ever happened to you that a fan just stopped spinning and basically broke down. I don't know, some bearing damage maybe, or some electronics failure, I don't know, I'm not sure. At least that's something that never happened to me, so I'm not quite sure about this. What's pretty clear though is that there is zero communication with this thing and the CPU, which means that it's not able to detect any kind of temperature value. I could just remove the cooler and it would do exactly the same thing and the CPU would just run into the thermal limit. So, I mean, the part that it can detect a broken fan is probably true, seems to work. I'm not sure how helpful this is in theory, but it will never be able to tell you that your CPU is hitting 110 degrees Celsius. That's definitely never going to happen. Now the question that maybe remains is how good does this jet cooler actually cool a 12900K? And I'm still sure that this thing is inspired by planes because this looks like one of those signal lamps that you can find on the wings of a plane but certainly not on the turbine itself. Well at least idle is working but you also have to keep in mind that the 12900KS is also downclocking to save energy and thus is also not consuming a lot of power. But what about Cinebench? That looks indeed quite toasty. As you can see temperatures, they're just all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius. And the package power it can cool, it's just 70 watts, so yeah, that's not gonna work. Not even, not even in gaming load, I mean obviously Cinebench was a hard thing to do, but that's not even going to be enough for gaming. One more thing I have to show to you is what happens if you power down the system with this thing attached. Okay, now imagine that this thing starts screaming and this, it also happens when you power on the system. So whenever you power it on and you turn it off, your system starts screaming like it's about to die. Yeah, no, no. To kind of sum up this video, I also found this Evercool GT365 Evercool was known for some obscure cooling solutions as well. This is the extended cooling system, basically the small device in here. And it comes kind of clear when we're looking at this questionable chart, because this thing was made to keep your fans spinning for additional five minutes after you power down your system. And if you check this chart, which is kind of hilarious, so it tells you that you shut down your system and then basically one minute after you power down, it says that your CPU, well, not your CPU, but your system increases in temperature. Um, yeah. Physics might be against you here.
Now I was wondering how is this going to work and inspecting the backside of the GT365 we can see that it's not containing any batteries which I first thought it might but it's just being attached to 5 volt standby. So to explain it so right now the system is powered off but it's attached to my PSU and as you can see some you might notice from your PC as well so you have some LEDs that are still running those are powered from the 5 volt standby power and this device is going to be connected to exactly the same power source which means that theoretically your fans can still spin after your system has been turned off so same as in this state the cooler could still run which would definitely further increase the system temperature but I mean if the fan is not spinning right now, as what you can see, the CPU temperature will not increase. It just doesn't make any kind of sense. To be even able to use the 5 volt standby power, we have to put this adapter in between our 24 pin connector, which is going to look lovely. Then we have to attach it to our car. Well, at least it looks like a car design. I'm not even sure why. We have two fan inputs. This has to be connected to the motherboard, for example, because I think in the normal operation, this will just probably channel through the power to the fan and once you power it down then it's going to run on 5 volt. I will connect and try it. Everything is wired up as it should be. I have 5 volt standby power connected and this is going to be connected to the CPU fan power from the motherboard and then just going to switch on. So it's a red light. I previously did the mistake that I plugged in the power delivery in the in the wrong side but now should be correct. Now plugging in fan 1. It's already spinning. I mean I already did the same thing for the German video. I mean that's already that that's always the part of doing every video twice, right? But I mean standby power was removed. I mean the, the PSU was shut down. As you can see the LED is now switching off so that means that the system is powered off. Just going to power it back on. Fan is still spinning. That is definitely interesting because in theory it's supposed it's supposed to work like that so I just power it on. Now the fan is also running at a higher RPM which is quite nice right now because I have about 30 degrees Celsius in my office right now. It's so warm outside. And that's basically how it's supposed to work. So you switch on your system, everything is running fine. And then at the end of the day, you decide to shut down your system. Now, yeah. Now, after you're switching off your system, this changes to red and the fan is still spinning. So it's holding on to what it's advertising. I'm not sure why it was already running when I was just switching on the PSU, if there's some kind of a counter inside that's still counting down from when I previously used it and I have to wait five minutes. That could be, I'm not sure about that, but at least it's still spinning right now after the system is powered down. How useful this is, is absolutely questionable because obviously your CPU is not going to care now that it's switched off how warm it's going to be because I mean worst case it's the same temperature I mean after shutting down the CPU temperature is the same as when it was last powered on so why would it be bad right I mean you just wait 10-15 minutes and it will be cool not sure why you would need this or if there is any purpose for this Technically, I don't see why you would do it. And that's maybe an explanation why those tools no longer exist. I'm not even sure if Evercool still exists. They were quite famous back then. They did a lot of crazy stuff, which we already had on our channel multiple times. And I mean, P Logic with their Sistotech. I mean, there's probably a reason for why they went out of business in 2000, because None of these tools make any kind of sense, but they were kind of entertaining and Sistotech, I mean, it's a pretty old tool, so kind of cool to look at. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.